The early 1950s to 1960s of Japanese cinema is often referred to as the Golden Age. During this time, many great films were released, including Kaneto Shindo's Children of Hiroshima in 1952, Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai in 1954, and Yasujiro Ozu's Tokyo Story in 1953 and Ohio in 1959. What made the cinema of the time masterful is that, while the rest of the world was focusing on developing new and better filmic techniques and devices, the Japanese filmmakers were focusing on what they already knew. The cinematography was precise, and images were carefully crafted with the use of superb costume and production design. The stories told were profound, and often reflective of life and the changes from traditional living to the effects of modern influences on everyday life. Some of the influential filmmakers during this time period include Akira Kurosawa, who directed the well-known Seven Samurai, released in 1954. Other filmmakers include Kaneto Shindo and Yasujiro Osu, whose work we will be looking at in this video essay. Adeline Gasana, in his blog post The Golden Age of Japanese Cinema, The Ultimate Film Snub, discusses how this period of Japanese cinema is rarely taught and discussed in film classes, save for Kurosawa's films. He argues that while Kurosawa's films were legendary and able to break into the international mainstream audience, it is difficult to encapsulate the entire movement in just one director's body of work, and adds that additional directors and films should be discussed, such as Yasujiro Ozu's Tokyo Story, in order to gain a full understanding of the time period. He goes on to add that Ozu's work, specifically Tokyo Story, is on a completely different end of the spectrum, focusing instead on growth in modern humans against the backdrop of an ever-changing and growing metropolis that ends up leaving the older generations behind. This video essay will focus on Yasujiro Ozu's film Ohio, or Good Morning, which was released in 1959. In a Vogue article by Marley Morris, he explains how Ozu's work differs from that of the other filmmakers of the time. Ozu's work was quiet in comparison to Kurosawa's work, focusing instead on the relationships between people. As a result, his work did not feel as cinematic as other works, but they more than made up for it in terms of portraying pure and raw human emotions and feelings. Ozu had a unique approach to filming. Many of his takes were long and filmed on a static camera, as Ozu was a firm believer that the camera was not to move unless it was absolutely necessary. Ozu also made use of the tatami shot, a technique specially developed by Japanese filmmakers that was designed to recreate the sensation of sitting down on a tatami mat during conversations, thus including the audience into the story world. This effect was achieved by creating a special tripod that was able to stand low enough to the ground and hold a camera in order to capture the specialized low-angle shots that now form a large part of traditional Japanese cinema. Ozu often chose to keep the camera rolling after a character had left the screen space and used shots of intermediate spaces, such as still life or neutral images, that served to provide a break from the film as transitions between scenes. Another quirk that forms part of an Ozu film is the fact that, during conversations, he would have the characters look into the camera and speak, thereby putting the audience in the position of the character being addressed and creating a feeling of being included in the film. Another point Marius makes is that many of Ozu's films start and end with the same image or circumstance. Ohio is a Genhai Geki film, which translates to a contemporary drama set in the modern world. Ohio follows two young brothers who ask their parents for a television set, and when their parents refuse, decide to take a vow of silence. This influences their interactions with the other neighbours, and subsequently the interactions of the neighbours with the boys' parents. As a result of the politeness of Japanese culture, the neighbors all know each other and as such are friendly and exchange greetings. The film shows how, when one deviates from the norm of small talk, their actions can subsequently influence how the others behave and act. What makes the film seminal is Ozu's portrayal of real, flawed characters, as well as the human psyche. He made events that audiences find insignificant in daily life, the main drama and driving forces behind his films. The story behind Ohio is both comedic and dramatic. The adventures of the boys and their behavior adds in a comedic element to the film, while the interactions between the parents and grown-ups are more dramatic, focusing on real-life issues such as falling in love, retirement, growing old, and gossip. 
While there's not a lot of action in the plot, the story is character-driven and has progression. This is one of the reasons why it stands out as a seminal work of the period. Ohio proves that a film doesn't necessarily have to be action-driven in order to make an impact, and sometimes the best drama comes from simple human interactions.